Hey everybody, this is me with Yvette Young at the Ibanez booth at NAMM 2020. It's so nice to meet you. Lovely How to you meet doing? you. How are you doing? We want a handshake? Yes. You're holding a very beautiful guitar there. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's the Tolman, isn't it? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I believe it's uh, the first of its kind. <laughs> sparkle, slime sparkle green. It's, it's so gorgeous, but in an almost disgustingly gorgeous way, you know? Yeah. Um, I love my, my sparkles and I love the Tolman because it's such an accessible guitar. And it's um, to talk, we're going straight into gear, which I don't normally do, but okay. um, I saw the guitar and I have to talk about it. Please. To see an artist of your level playing a Tolman is quite refreshing, you know, because many artists play like guitars that are not accessible by your average player. Is there any particular reason you went for the Tolman? Well, I guess I'll give a little bit of backstory about how yeah, I even got yeah, to start playing these. So um, I initially started playing on a Telecaster and I remember um, it was like a $90 SX Tele clone, but it was outfitted with some Bill Lawrence pickups that I really loved. Um, and you know, even though it wasn't like necessarily a high quality instrument, I just found it like, I mean, the neck was pretty nice. I, I think like, as far as the price point goes, I didn't mean that in a derogatory way, but I mean like, as far as the price point oh, goes, yeah, sure, you know, it's pretty good for 90 bucks. <laughs> a guitar center, <laughs> okay, there we go. you know what I mean? Um, and you know, I grew up having a lot of money and I actually, I didn't have enough money to buy a guitar at the time. I traded that guitar uh, with uh, for my friend in Louisiana. I gave him a drum machine and he sent me the telly just to play with. So it was my first electric guitar and I love the thing. I, I was just really inspired by it. Um, and I played it for a while and then I got in touch with Ibanez and they were like, how would you like to try one of our Talmans? I think it'd be great for you and what you do. Um, and they sent me this uh, sparkly green telly, uh, sorry, sparkly pink telly. And uh, I loved it so much that I ended up cannibalizing the pickups out of the SX telly ah. and putting in the pink one because I just found those pickups so inspiring. They're really low output, which is nice, um, really dynamic, which is what I like in pickups. Um, and then from then on, I just fell in love with the neck profile. I've been as necks are just so fast, like they're, they're thin. Um, I believe this one has the U shape profile and it's like um, tapered. Uh, I'm looking at it from here and it looks really big. Like, may, may I? Yeah, of course. Okay, this is what I'm not expecting because of our, our, our size difference, but uh -huh. I'm really into my fat necks at the moment. Uh -huh. My two favorites are like a U like on a telly, yeah. but also on the other side is a wizard from the RG yes, series. The and then I don't know why I love those two different, drastically uh, different necks. That's a lot thicker than I expected. I'm gonna buy that guitar. Oh, you like it? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I am gonna buy that one. Yeah, um, it's actually, to me, compared to the SX Tele thing, compared to a lot of Fender guitars that I also have played, I just, I find it to be actually a lot thinner than some of the bass full neck profiles that they have. And I like that, because I have a broken finger, I have small hands, so I need to be comfortable if I'm like playing, tapping, and like the kinds of finger style that I do. You mean you so, have a broken finger right now? Yeah, or you, I have or a broken you... finger. It's like permanently broken. Me too. Really? Oh, and also, but I have two. I, I win. You have two. Okay. <laughs> you do win. <laughs> well, actually, I'm just kidding. <laughs> ah, now, now we're opening up. Now we're opening yeah. up. So let's get away from gear, even okay. though you seem to be fairly comfortable talking about gear. Musically, okay, what's the story? I mean, you're doing all this tapping and this melodic stuff. How did you get from like learning that, like from getting a, a cheap guitar to where you are now? What's, what's the secret? Um, so I, I don't think price should even matter when it comes no. to gear. Like, you know, sometimes I, I'm a pianist mainly. Um, I grew up just playing piano and violin and guitar is my newest instrument. And for pianos and violins, I find that sometimes it doesn't matter how much it costs. Like certain instruments just inspire you. Like I have a ton of different guitars and um, the most inspiring one is actually the, the Strat style Talman, Talmans that I have with the 5-2 set. I just find that when I sit down, music just comes out. And that's something that I can't really explain. It's almost like just like, you know, sound and, and um, feel is like a subjective thing. And I feel like people want different things out of their instruments. So um, I guess my biggest hope for anyone who plays this guitar is, I hope that it just inspires music to come out of you. Because that's what happened when I started playing them. I just started to write like tons and tons of music. Um, and I think that's ultimately what I want the most out of guitar. At the end of the day, like, yeah, aesthetics are to some people important. I don't 
personally care as much. Um, but you did make it sparkly green. Yeah, I did. I, did. I wanted to like kind of make it flamboyant. Oh, and it's really cool because I feel like you could green screen things onto it. So if you do like a video, like you could put like a flock of birds or you could put, you know, um, Yvette, yeah, I am space. so going to do that. What does it look like on the back? Let's, let's flip it over. I am so going to green screen that. <laughs> and I'm going to say that the idea was entirely mine and nobody else told me. <laughs> um, going back to your question, sure, yeah. uh, I started out in kind of the DIY punk scene. Um, you know, it's just like a small community of people just playing house shows. And again, it's not like, you know, we all had a ton of money. So a lot of our gear ended up just being super beat up. And I encourage people to do that with this guitar. I want them to play the crap out of it and I want them to ding it up um, you know uh, oh it comes with a sticker set because I also do like visual art so I made like a little sticker set of cute little flames and like you know flowers and birds it's like something for everyone um, and you know you can put it anywhere on the guitar you don't have to of course you can also keep it pristine but I kind of encourage people to put personal touches on their instrument so that it's extra inspiring when they pick it up it really feels like theirs that's awesome. And I, I love the way that you're about inspiring musicians. A lot of people we've spoken to this year are about like realizing it's not the gear, it's the music, and the gear is just helping you to make the music. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Yvette, I wish you the best of luck, like just having fun with music, which it seems you're doing. And that's the goal, isn't it? <laughs> of course. If it wasn't fun, we wouldn't do it. I think more people would want to play guitar if they weren't so intimidated by it, and they just thought that it was a good, it was a fun time. True. So. Can I ask you one question finally? Yeah. What's the artist that inspires you most? Oh man, that's a loaded that's question. A so because, big question. Who comes? Who comes to mind? You, you must already like have like a list of ten. You know what? I I'm really really inspired by people who who stick to their guns and aren't scared to do something a bit different. And then I'm really inspired by really good songwriters and composers because that's kind of the, I come from a classical background, so that's where my, my heart is. I'm not much of like a jammer improviser, like I really admire people who can do that. But at the end of the day, I, I consider myself more of like a songwriter. I think of writing music like composing, you know, so uh, Olaf Arnold, he's amazing, he's Icelandic. He does a lot of like movie soundtrack stuff and combines electronic elements with his classical background. And that really speaks to me because I'm trying to take my classical background and put it in like a rock context, you know? Yeah. Um, not in like a neoclassical way, but more like, oh, what motifs can I take from the classical world? What values like dynamics and um, mel melodicness? I can take that and like put it into like the shred scene, you know? Uh, I really like Ryuchi Sakamoto. He's another pianist, composer. Uh, I think Bjork is awesome for just being really now experimental it's and now she's it's like great, like she's Icelandic. I just like Icelandic people, I guess. Like, so I expect to talk to you one day in Iceland and I mean, say welcome home. It's my goal. I've never been, but I'm looking whenever I get a break from touring and writing music, like I just want to go to Iceland and shut myself in and write music. <laughs> Iceland sounds the perfect place yeah. to do it. Yvette, thank you so much. Absolutely meeting you. So cool to be with you. Um, follow the hashtag ToneNam20 to catch up with all the rest of the Toman coverage here at Nam2020. And also check out this guitar and Yvette's music. And we will see you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.